Welcome to this edition of Video Drone by DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be doing an unboxing of this. What is this? Well, I am joining the Over 50 FPV Club. Well, the Way Over 50 FPV Club. So, it's not just Mr. Steel and Sharpoo or whatever the heck he calls himself that uh, can fly FPV. So can us old folks. So, why do I say that? Because this guy has dual GPS. But I'll get into that in a minute. So this is the Wakira Runner 250. So it's the perfect fusion of fast and furious and hopefully easy flying enjoyment. So tell you what, I just uh, took this out of its bigger box. Actually, it came just like this wrapped in some kind of bubble wrap with an exterior. And so uh, I haven't even figured out how to open the box yet. So I think it just pop up these tabs and I think I have it upside down. I thought the colored side was the right side up, but now this side is the right side up. So it's equipped with a Devo 7. Now this thing was actually, I thought, a fairly good price for what I got. I think I paid uh, around $329 for this guy. And one of the reasons I got it outside of the FPV, or potential FPV enjoyment, let me put it that way, is, um, you know, economically, maybe it will be a little bit competitor to the Phantom 3 slash Spark, um, you know, because the, the Phantom 3s have popped back up in price, I've noticed a little bit, you know, closer to the 400 level, and, uh, you know, this is smaller than a Phantom 3, bigger than a Spark, there's no gimbal, but we'll look at a couple different things, but I want to get into it, so they have a quick start guide, very nicely done, uh, kind of impressed with everything so far, user manual and everything looks on this DVD in here, so let's set this off to the side. So we got obligatory cords. I don't know what this is for. It looks like um, audio jack, but single. And then it's got, uh, you know, the obligatory micro USB. And then it's got the controller. Ooh, this is pretty. This is really, really pretty. I feel so official. I, I feel, I feel like I could grow a mustache with Mr. Steel just by the feel of the controls. But. Uh, so it looks definitely very interesting. So uh, it feels rather high quality. Um, I don't know how this pops off. Uh, but this looks like so. Uh, looks like it takes four double A's. Since this has no FPV in the unit itself, I think the uh, the double A's will last just fine. Like all the switches, these things always remind me of porcupines, but it has a real good feel. I like these back pieces for gripping. So. Uh, Really smooth stick movement. I actually like these stick movements better than my my DJI sticks. Uh, so it feels very good. Uh, I like the motion on the the throttle stick because um, the throttle is not self-centering in this manner, but it is self-centering in yaw, and it's self-centering here. So this should be interesting. I wonder if it's got a switch to flip because this is one of the things, as I understand it, it's supposed to have a GPS hold mode. And that's one of the main reasons I bought it. Because I tell you what, folks, I am not going to really buy another quadcopter where I can't flip a switch and just have it come back to me. Best thing since sliced bread. So let's put that aside for the time being. And here is the, the meat and potatoes of this whole thing. I can get out of the box. And this bad boy is heavy. Whoa. Yeah, it's got a battery stuck in it. That's a pretty good sized battery. That must be the battery charger. But that's a pretty good sized battery that slides in, in here. Uh, takes the ETX60, plugs in here. Um, comes with a Velcro strap, I'm assuming, to strap it in. Plastic landing gear. This really wants to fall out. Uh, GPS. Now, one of the pieces that uh, I thought was interesting, I'm looking at this, um, you know, on this newer version, um, well, actually, let me remove this. So, uh, this looks like a charger, and this looks like probably props. And these props are different. Now, this is the newer version of the Wakira. And uh, I think this is a little bit different than the older version of the Wakira runner. Uh, so let me go ahead. I think that's pretty much it. Outside of the charger, still in the box. So let me go sit that right there for a moment. So here's the runner next to the spark. 
So you can see that this is not hugely bigger than the Spark, which is interesting for roughly mm, half the investment of the Spark, per se. Now, I'm not trying to really compare these two. They're, they're somewhat different copters in their own right. Um, but, you know, I wanted something on a smaller size because the Phantom 3 garners a lot of attention when I take it out for good, bad, or indifferent. It's just what it does. The Spark really no attention. This thing will probably get more attention than the Spark because of its alien look, if you will, uh, which I think is kind of cool, but I think it'll it'll garner some attention, so I'm going to move the Spark out of the way for a second and take a bigger look at this. Um, so in the older versions, the GPS was set further, further back, and there was a mounting up here for a Go GoPro. Now, I really don't see how a GoPro can mount. Now, it's supposed to have a rather interesting camera on it. Um, and again, you know, obviously there's no gimbal. It is vibration mounted on the front. And uh, I, it kind of appeared that the, the camera system on this was... Um, uh, had an, had SD ability. Now, I don't see it. Now, one of the things I'm thinking about actually doing is... Uh, taking this guy, which is uh, a DVR, you've probably seen it in another uh, video that I've done, and attaching it on here, just because again, I could, I could stick this up here, and this would easily fit, power it from the battery, run the, the cables, because this has the, um, uh, it's got the uh, power buck on there for 3.7 to 5, so I could take this, mount this on here, put an SD card is what I'm thinking, and take video, take higher quality video right from this camera up into this DVR and then, you know, take it on an SD card. So that's what I'm thinking if there isn't that ability. Um, you know, because again, if we put a GoPro up here, it's going to be looking right at this GPS. Now, part of this is that the reason I got the newer version uh, over the older version, it's actually got a little bit better price in a way on the newer version. Plus again, this has dual GPS. It has both regular US GPS and it has the Russian Glasnost system. So this gives it the opportunity to get far more satellites than standard GPS would. So it should get a far better fix in three-dimensional space uh, than most other quads do. And this is part of what I'm interested in. Now, it's kind of interesting. This camera is a little bit exposed in the bottom. There are the landing feet, but uh, Again, uh, this is hitting the bottom. Now, let's take a quick look. I am a little bit curious. This guy is fairly heavy. And I'm not sure I can set this whole thing. I think I might be able to. So without the battery, this is 458 grams. I think this is all sitting on there. Yeah, about 458, 459. Without the battery, the spark, so it weighs about twice the spark without, because the spark doesn't have the battery in it either. The battery itself is about 182 grams, so that's almost 50% uh, additional weight of that uh, in the battery. So once we slide the battery pack in, this baby gets pretty darn heavy. So we're up around 600 or so grams, almost 650 grams, if you will. Probably should push that back so you can see it a little bit. So I'm about 645 grams uh, fully loaded with the battery. So if this baby hits you, it's going to hurt. Uh, just remember that. So anyways, let's see. Because one of the pieces I, I really wanted um, is an FPV-style copter to fly over the lake, to fly low, fast, do do banking, hopefully not put it in the drink. Um, although the price on this isn't too bad, so, you know, hopefully I don't lose it, but if I did, you know, it's 300 some bucks, not 700, not a Maverick price, not a thousand bucks, uh, etc. So that battery just really likes to keep sliding out of there because apparently one is supposed to cinch it in with this, but that kind of goes the wrong way, so. That's a little back ass word if you ask me. Um, but uh, interesting. 
Now I did order another battery, but I, I also I think an important note is is the uh, props are different because what I did is I actually picked up some Wakira props and these are for the original Wakira and they're definitely they're around the same size but different blade definitely different blade configurations. So I don't know. Uh, they look like they'll probably fit, but I don't know how they will perform or would perform on here. So just be, uh, just note that this again, um, and I got somewhere, I think I bought another battery too. I think the battery would probably work. It's a little, does seem to be a little bit smaller than this guy because, um, let's look, let's see what, what is this guy? Obviously it's three cell because we have three wires here. So, uh, please, really doesn't say. Um, let's take a quick look here. So that's ground on this side. So it's a 3C, which we kind of knew that from looking at the wires. It didn't tell us too much. So just using my tester here, looking at the numbers. So that, that all looks like it's good at least, so the battery seems to be alright. Uh, so we got this, this set up, and so this all looks very interesting. I am really excited to get out and fly, fly this guy. Hopefully I'll have some time this week and the weather will permit. Um, interested in taking a look at this, because I'm going to probably have to take a little bit of a look. Uh, I'm not sure really what all these uh, switches are for. Hold, train... FMD, direction, mix, so uh, power on, power off, uh, again there looks like some buttons on the back, or is this uh, external power port, this might be, yeah it's got an external power port here, and what is this, that must be where that other plug goes that looks like a headphone jack so DSC charge oh this must be so you can charge it if you put rechargeable batteries in it uh, it's trim tabs again really good feel out of this controller um, so lanyard mount hmm 2.4 gigahertz that's interesting Devo 7 so Anyways, this is really what comes in the box, so I'm rather excited to to actually get this guy so and take it up flying. Uh, it, you know, definitely a bit heavier, a bit larger, not really larger physically than I had thought. It's about the size I had physically thought, but it is a little bit heavier in per se than I expected it would be. Like the antenna design, the mushroom antenna. Um, so hopefully a lot of good FPV coming from this rig. And you see we have the receiving antennas here. Now the part I like about it is they fold down like this for easy transport. This is the one thing I actually considered getting this in place of the Spark. And I'm kind of glad I did. I'm, glad, I'm still glad I got the Spark. Uh, because I don't think this could replace it. But I was looking for something a bit travel copterish. And again, size-wise, this is still pretty big to travel with versus what I can travel with the Spark. But I think this will be a lot of fun for uh, lake flying as we come into fall and everything. So again, I'm really looking forward to flying this guy. So anyways, that's it for the unboxing. You know the routine. There'll be a subscribe button coming up over there. Let me know in the comments below if you have one of these or what you think about this. Um, and I'll definitely have some more follow-up videos as I figure this guy out and everything, how to work it. And we'll definitely get out in the field and do some flying with it and see what it does. So... Cheers. See you in the next video.